Good morning. Good morning. And welcome back to the live morning show here on WHIG TV, sponsored by Don Blook Chevrolet. And we are so happy this morning to have, as we do several times a month, Kathy Akers. Kathy, good morning. Thank you. Lynn. Kathy is a professional real estate agent, and we spend this time um, every couple of weeks talking about different topics in residential real estate. Kathy, um, this morning we want to talk a little bit about agency. That is right. You know, when I took my uh, business law class in college, I remember that we spent more time on the topic of agency than anything else. It, it's, mm -hmm. In the law, it is a very broad and very deep topic. In real estate, it really gives uh, both the buyer and the seller and the agent a lot of flexibility and a lot of responsibility in terms of how someone can work with you. Yes, it does. Um, and it depends on the company, too, as to the extent of that. Um, and we'll get into that when we get into the dual agency part. But for every um, person that speaks to a real estate agent, the first thing, or close to the first thing that should be done is that the agent should have a discussion on working with real mm -hmm. estate agents. There, um, I have with me today, I have a paper version that we print out, but it could also be a brochure. We do have those available um, that mm -hmm. they're going to discuss that with you and get you to sign off that you have, that you all have discussed that and they've given you that information. And what they're actually discussing okay. there is that from an agency standpoint, you as an agent are representing the interests of your clients. That's correct. And, and that's where the law comes in because in order to do that, there are a whole bunch of things that have to be discussed and have to be agreed to so that properly and accurately and legally, you can represent your clients that's in, right. in the, in the prop purchase of you buying or selling your house. That's right. One of the first things um, is we talk about as an agent, we can either represent the seller, we can either represent the buyer, or we have the option of being a dual agent where we represent both sides of the transaction. In regards to that, one of the things that it says here and, um, and we should talk about is that you should not discuss anything that would harm you personally in the transaction until you have signed representation either as a, as a listing agent or as a buyer's agent. So for, let's talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. For example, who would you say something to that might harm you before you have agency representation? <clears throat> well, let's, yesterday was open house day. Okay. Let's say you have been working with a, a specific agent in looking for a new property. Um, you decided yesterday there was a couple of houses that looked interesting, so you were going out looking at houses. Now you've already signed probably a representation to have someone to represent you as the buyer. Okay. <clears throat> and you go out and when you're t the person that's at the open house. Who is, who is not the, the your buyer, buyer's, buyer's agent. agent. Yeah, right. Okay. That person is most likely the listing agent or the seller's agent. Their interest lies with the seller. seller. So anything you say that, um, and, and let's talk about this in terms of not that, oh, I like the house, but, well, I'm qualified to buy the house. Or, you know, different things as far as um, that would hurt your bargaining power. Mm -hmm. So that if you and your agent then went back and looked at the house and discussed the merits as to whether you wanted to make an offer, if you've told that seller's agent mm -hmm. anything, they are obligated to let their seller know. Again, in the agency, in, in, in the, the scope of agency, they are representing the seller sorry, at that point. Yes, that, and that's true. Now, as far as um, let's say you called a sign, you don't have any representation at all. You go in and you meet who, whoever you called on the sign. Again, they are the listing agent. They're representing the seller. You go in. You don't have representation. You talk about this, and that you find that you want them to go ahead and represent you. You're okay with dual agency. Mm -hmm. 
and that is where that agent is representing both sides of the transaction. And, and that might happen, say for example, when someone is tr coming to Rocky Mountain or traveling through, mm -hmm. and they know that they're going to relocate, but they don't know where. Right. They're driving through a neighborhood, they see a house, they, it's got a for sale sign in the front yard. They say, you know, that house looks really nice. Let's give, let's call the number, which is what the sign is designed to do. That's right. The listing agent says, well, I can show that house to you this afternoon at two o'clock. The, buy, the potential buyer walks in, sees the house, likes it, and says, you know what, even though I'm not from here, I think this is something we'd like. I'd like to talk to you about representing, so, uh, moving forward with this. Right. And so um, in that dual agency situation, and um, I, I usually use the, um, the terminology, let's say you're in a basketball game. As the listing agent, I'm that seller's coach, cheerleader, <laughs> that type of thing. If you have your own buyer's agent, they're your coach, cheerleader, and representative. When we become a dual agent, we have to make it a win-win situation. Um, we have to be the mediator. I become a referee is, is basically <laughs> to kind of help those that, you know, that sports metaphor, you know, a lot of people relate to it. They can understand mm -hmm. that. Um, with that, it, the piece becomes as the dual agent if I know the seller has their house listed here but they can ultimately take a price here I can't let you know that and likewise if you've made an offer here and I know you've got approval for here I can't let mm -hmm. the um, the seller know so we try to keep things to where it's only material facts any facts that are relative to the property or to the actual purchase. So if, um, let's say, one of the things that you may not think is a material fact that, but let's say the seller is, can, is um, upside down in their house. In mm -hmm. other words, they owe, owe more than the market value. Mm -hmm. That is a material fact because they're either gonna have to bring money to the table but the other piece is a bank is going to have to approve that yes. contract as well. So you as a buyer need to know that. You've been doing this for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Just let me ask you your personal opinion. Do you like being a dual agent or do you prefer to be on one side of the fence or the other? Um, I personally would rather be on one side of the fence or the other. But over the years I have done this enough that I know what that line that I need to walk and the other piece is is asking permission for certain things to be said so if I really if I know that you are really interested in the house and there's multiple offers you know that might be now that really becomes a, a, mm -hmm. a scenario that we we don't really want to get into but the thing is is let's say you know, you, um, I can talk, well, let me back up because that, that's not a good scenario. <laughs> but one of the things is in, let's say you've made that, that offer and the seller is, um, is looking at it mm -hmm. and not real sure, you know, there are some things that I can tell them that might help in the scenario and we can talk about that and get permission to do so such as, you know, my family has always lived in this, you know, my, I grew up in this mm -hmm. neighborhood, my parents live around the corner, we want the grandkids to, to be closer to the family. You know, something like that that helps them understand why you're really interested in their house. And I can see where it would be easier representing buyer or seller, right. not buyer and seller, because in that mm -hmm. respect, you have much more flexibility and the line is much clearer about what you can say right. and what you really you can't, can't say. say. That's really. true. And, you know, um, I would say in, in this regard, one of the things that we want um, everyone to understand is an agent is supposed to go over this information with you up front. Um, now, we always say, you know, you shouldn't say anything until you have um, representation that we are allowed to do a verbal representation until we put it in writing and so mm -hmm. that way it, let's say that scenario you came into town 
you, um, let's say you saw the, you drove by and you stopped into an office and you said, you know, we'd like to see the area. Can you show us a couple of houses? We'd like to see A, B, C, and D, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so they can pull some things and go out and show you. If, if you've connected with that agent, you want to work with that agent, you can ju then verbally say, yes, I would like yes. your representation to represent me at the, as the buyer, knowing that when it comes to the time to put it in writing, yes. that you're willing to put it in writing. Mm -hmm. So they then, even if they represent the seller, they, it can put you in a dual agency situation at that point, um, unless it, if it's a house that either that um, listing agent or li that agent has listed or the other piece is if it's listed by that company. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about the how the, it being, for lack of a better word, a corporate listing as right. opposed to an individual agent right. listing. Right, right. So anything that is listed within that company could poss potentially be a dual agency situation. Now, I have worked with um, some uh, sellers and buyers over the years that did not want um, dual agency representation. And, and that's very understandable. They wanted that um, representation fully on their side. And, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, that's ideal in having that representation because there's going to be things that I cannot say as a dual agent, you know, um, and a lot of times I can't say at all when somebody, like somebody comes through a, right. a a, an open house and they'll say, well, why are they moving? That's not a material fact. So, and so. I believe I know the answer to this question, but I want to ask you anyway. Mm -hmm. If a client comes to you and says, we have a house to sell and we also need, we have to buy a house because we need some place to live. And they say, Kathy, we want you to list our house to sell it and we also want you to help us find a house to buy. Mm -hmm. Is that dual agency? No, it's not. It is not. Um, unless you were purchasing a house that was either listed by me or okay. was listed with the company. Um, I am, a, I am, when I list your house, I become your listing agent or your seller's agent. That is a separate transaction. If I'm helping you to purchase, I become your buyer's agent. That is a separate, separate transaction. transaction. So um, it, it, it helps with that in that I know all the background between the two transactions and, and that actually helps you in moving um, in moving forward because I can help with dates and close mm -hmm. you know coordinating closings and that kind of thing because and that's so, exactly what someone would like to do we want to have right. we want to close close on the sell right. and we want to immediately turn around and close on the buy so that we can move <laughs> that's right where we to be. that's right and is, is it correct to say that when someone's riding down the road and sees a, see a, a sign in front of a house that says for sale by owner, that that owner is taking on all those responsibilities on their shoulders to be their own agent? That is correct. And um, if you happen to see that, you still have that right to have buyer's representation. If you're, if you're, if you're the potential buyer right. for mm -hmm. the, a for sale by owner. Right. The, the piece becomes that as it, if I'm representing you as a buyer, let's say we were already under representation. You saw a for sale by owner sign. Call me. I can make that call to see about showing the property. See if they have an interest in paying that um, percentage commission. Mm -hmm. Knowing that as a buyer's agent that you may ultimately, um, you may be responsible for paying my commission if you go with that for sale by owner. Okay. Okay. So, you know, um, that way you still have the representation. Um, the other piece is, is if you're a buyer that doesn't have representation and you're working with a for sale by owner, um, you need to make sure that there are some things that they are giving you that is um, their responsibility, such as the residential property disclosure. Um, yes. That is something that is required in every residential yes. transaction sale, um, uh, resale. The other is the, the mineral rights and oil and gas disclosure. In, in, thank you, Kathy. In the time that we have left, I want to ask you about a particular situation that I've heard occurring 
more than once over the last uh, over the last several months in hot housing markets where mm -hmm. the set where homes are, are going with multiple offers right. many of those offers above asking price I have heard of sellers that not only have asked the potential buyers to be qualified to be pre-qualified and not through right. all of them they have asked for additional personal information from the buyers. In fact, one instance that I heard was where a, a family had to write basically a letter or an essay that said, this is why I want to buy your house and this is why you should, buy, should sell your house to my family. Right. The, the individuals that I know were turned down from buying the house and the reason given to them by the buyer was, I didn't like your essay as or well as I like somebody by else. The, by the seller. By the, by the, the seller, seller, yeah, by the seller. Is, is that, is, <coughs> I, I want to ask if that's legal because you're not an attorney, but right. the mm -hmm. ethics of that and the, abil and, and the, the added responsibility of, of, of having to write something that can be used as a reason to deny uh, your purchase of the house. Well, it, let, me, let me take that from two different angles. Okay. As the buyer's agent, I have had um, where I've recommended a buyer to write a letter before to um, when we and this was before um, we saw the turn in the market where things were starting to pick up mm -hmm. that the couple really liked the house I had them to write a letter explaining how how much they liked the house how much they wanted to see their family grow there not anything that would of person you know anything that financially would affect them but it helped the family to understand why they were looking at the house mm -hmm. now and possibly to help them to consider their offer a little little more especially if it's a little lower than what it should be understood okay the other piece on that let me go from this on the selling side as representing the the um, uh, the, seller, the seller is that that gives them a sense of who you are coming into the situation. Ultimately, the seller is going to look at multiple things when they accept that offer. Not necessarily just that letter, but they're also going to look at the terms that you put down on paper. Um, are you asking for closing costs? Are you asking for a home warranty? Have you asked for extended period to close? So it's not just that letter that they're looking at. That might give them a sense of who you are that, um, you know, coming into the situation. But there may have been other factors that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, along the way that it was just not that letter. So a seller can make that sort of essay a requirement? Mm -hmm. Um, we don't see it as we don't see it as much, but they could ask for it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you as a buyer have that option of saying yes or no. I guess it depends on how much you want the house. That's right. Well, Kathy, our time is up this morning. Mm -hmm. First of all, thank you. This discussion on exactly what the agency and what the representation part, part is from a real estate agent is very valuable, and, and it, it goes to, to the very heart of why working with a professional for many people is exactly the right thing to do to make sure that their rights are protected and that in a, a transaction as complicated as buying a house that no one person takes advantage of, of one side takes advantage of the other. That is correct. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You've been talking to Kathy Akers who is a professional real estate agent here in the Twin Counties and you're watching the live morning show here on WHIG TV. We're going to take a, a moment to have a few commercial breaks and we'll be right back.